Are you a teacher, researcher, archivist, or really anyone that needs to scan books, documents, artwork, maps, small objects? And furthermore, maybe you want to be able to present those scans live, either in an online meeting environment, or you want to present them in a classroom, or present them in an auditorium to an audience during a presentation? Well, today I'm going to talk about a tool that allows you to do all that and a whole lot more, the Caesar ET24 Pro Scanner. Now, if you've seen any of the other videos here on the channel where I talk about learning and technology, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Caesar scanners. I have a Shine Ultra, which is a very portable scanner, so I'll use that when I go somewhere else. Um, I also have the Aura Pro, which is a fantastic scanner that I keep on my desk in my office so that I can scan documents quickly if I have something that I need to quickly make a copy of. But today I'm going to talk about their high-end scanner, which is the Caesar ET24 Pro. This scanner is really well suited for a classroom environment or a lab environment, somewhere where I'm going to probably be doing a lot more scanning, or I have very specific needs for scanning that are a little bit more advanced than what some of the other scanners will normally be used for. Now the other scanners are fantastic and based upon your needs, you're going to want to be able to choose a scanner that works best for you. In fact, I have another video here on the channel where I compare the Shine Ultra with the Aura scanner. Today though, I'm kind of going to a different class of scanners. This is the professional level scanner that has some features that are really well geared to things like archival use or extensive classroom use. And this is a scanner that I think would be very useful for a department within a school or a classroom within a school, or like I said, archiving. We're going to go through the features of the scanner. We're going to take a look at some of the different things that it can do. And then I'm going to demonstrate using it in a few different ways so that you can see just how versatile and powerful it really is. Let's unbox the ET24 Pro. It's by Caesar, C-Z-U-R. And it's a larger scanner, so it comes in a fairly hefty box. So it's a fairly big box that it's going to come in. <clears throat> when we open it up, we have some really nice packaging. So it looks great, which is always nice when you're un unboxing something. We have the envelope with the uh, different instructions and the CD in there. So there's the, the company logo in there. We open it up. You can see we have the CD with the driver software, some instructions in there, warranty card. I will normally just download the software from the website and you will need the serial number which is at the bottom of the scanner in order to register it. But let's take a look at everything. So we have a foot pedal and I'm actually going to grab the USB cord because it makes it easier to grab the finger cots actually. So here is the USB cord and with the USB cord it's just a standard USB cord that connects to the back of the scanner. You'll have one USB cord to your computer and you'll have another USB cord to either the foot pedal or the hand scanning pedal. So let's put that aside. And then here are the infamous finger cots. Everybody likes talking about the, everybody uh, talks about these online and such. So these are used to hold the book flat. So if you're scanning a book, you use these to hold them flat. There is a left and a right, and the pattern on them will have them removed from the scans. So this is a very unique feature of the Caesar scanners, is that they come with these finger cots that will be removed and allow you to hold books flat. It's a very neat idea. So I'll put those back into the box. I'm going to keep this nice and neat. Actually, I should just probably, well, we'll look at the foot pedal here. I'm going to set it up in a moment. So we'll look at the foot pedal here. You can see long extension cord goes underneath your desk and then you can use your foot to take the scans. This is one of the things I really like about the all of the Caesar scanners that come with a foot pedal is that they are extremely useful when you're scanning a book to use your foot to take the scan. There's a, a handheld one too with the ET24 Pro. So if you're doing documents or cards or such, you can have that nice hand scanning tool. I use that for you know different types of documents that I'm scanning. And then we have power. Now power comes with a number of different connectors depending on what part of the world you live in. So you have the North American connectors, you have uh, European and Asian connectors in there as well. So you have the ability to use your scanner across the globe. I'll be using it here in North America. I'm in Canada, so I will just put that back. Actually, I 
but I'll just put that aside. They're not going to fit back in the box. Trying to repackage something is always challenging. Actually, I don't even know why I'm repackaging it. I should probably just set it up. I'll do that in a moment, but it's just such pretty packaging that I want to, you know, put it all together there. Now let's have a look here. We have a, we have the scanning mat, which is a mouse pad kind of fabric. So this is going to have a, um, dark side here where objects will be put on to be scanned just put that aside underneath that there is the lights that are used the led lights that are used for the scanner this device or this portion of the light setup will sit midway on the scanner it has its own independent power switch so be aware of that turn it on and off but it magnetically just connects up to the center of the scanner let's take the scanner out of the box so with the scanner here, let's just lift it out. It feels very nice. It's like a high quality scanner. So it doesn't feel cheap at all. It feels heavy and there's some buttons down the side, has some connectors on the back, HDMI out, uh, reset button, USB to the, to the scanning, the USB, to the computer power and the power switch. So now I'm going to take the LED Aux um, auxiliary lights and I'm going to put that about midway you can see that there's a little groove there and it just magnetically clicks in and so now these lights here can be used to scan the surface of whatever I'm scanning and provide additional lighting you see the sensors are here and then I've got the LED lights for lights here and a camera and then on the top of the scanner this is a neat feature I have a little LCD window that I can look through and see what's below the scanner. So that helps to align things. And then I have some indicators for sound, camera, and power. So there we have it, the ET24 Pro Unboxed. Let's set it up and take a look at it on the desk. So I'm going to grab this here. Here we have the desk set up. Here's the mat. Here are the finger cots. Here is the hand scanning indicator thing, the foot pedal. So we have the foot pedal, we have the power supply set up for North America, and then I have the USB cable that's going to go to the computer. When I put the scanner onto the desk, I'm going to put it into the little groove at the top of the mat here. So that's going to align it. And it doesn't have to be exact, but it fits perfectly in there. So I'm going to demonstrate a number of features of the ET24 Pro by scanning some different objects. So First of all, I do have this additional LED light set that will provide additional light onto my scanning surface. The unit itself has buttons on the side here. So you'll notice that with the LEDs, once I have it turned on, I can actually cycle through different intensities for the light. This is very handy if I'm working with, uh, for example, here in the studio, I have a lot of ambient light, so I probably don't need to have as much light and I'll show you that. I have a zoom in and zoom out button. So when I'm using the HDMI output, you can see I can zoom in and out on objects. Again, I'll show you that in a few moments. And I have a scan button here. So I can actually initiate a scan by pressing this button here. The other way that I can initiate a scan is by using the handheld scanner button. So this is a USB, it connects to the back of the scanner and I can just press this button to initiate a scan as well. Or in my case, I have the foot pedal, which is under the desk and I can just have that connected to the back of the scanner, press on the foot pedal and get a scan. For the demonstrations that I'm going to do, I'm going to scan a map that I need to use for a hike. I'm going to scan a, a series of pages from a stamp album. I'm going to scan a graphic novel, a large size graphic novel, and I'm going to scan a traditional book that I might want to create a copy of. I'm also going to demonstrate how I can do a circuit board demonstration and make annotations as I'm demonstrating that as well. So we have a few different things to scan and I think you'll enjoy seeing these all being scanned and, and see how the scanner can handle each of these in a slightly different way but all of them with a high level of quality. So the first thing I'm going to scan will be this map. So with this map, I want to be able to scan the uh, trail that I'm going to go on. So I'll go into the scanner software here. I can also see what's underneath the scanner area through the LCD screen up here. And then in the software as well, I can see 
the parameters here of what I'm scanning. In this case here, this is a color map, so I'm going to choose color. I'm going to do a flat single page. Now I have a choice. I can press the button here to scan, but in my case I'm reaching over the document, so I don't want to do that. Uh, I can also use this handheld button if it's attached, so that's a great way to scan as well, especially if you have a lot of documents. But I'm going to use a foot pedal because I have that attached. So now I'm going to take my first scan, I press the foot pedal, and my first scan is processing. I can now go flip the map over, line it up to where I want it to be, press again the foot pedal, and now I've got both sides of that, or the trail portion of that map scanned in. In the software, if I double click on one of the items that I've scanned in, you can see I've got this nice color scan. I can zoom in, we can take a look here, areas that I have to watch out for high tides, cliff areas that I have to make sure that I'm at lower mid tide, areas where I can camp and get water. So there we go. So that's an example of scanning a fairly large document, a map. You can also combine those scans together and you can do some post-production editing as well. So if I go to the back button here, you'll see that with those scans, I can select them, either all of them, or I could select individual ones. And I can go in and I can actually do things like crop them. I can go in and I can rotate them. I can do things like adjust the contrast. There's a number of post-production items in here. Later on, we'll take a look, for example, at the OCR that I can do to the scan. But in my case, I want to go back to scanning and let's scan our next item. So the next item that I want to scan is going to be a very interesting. It's, a, it's a, a book. It's conservation and duck stamps. That doesn't matter, that portion of it. But what this is, is this is an album. It's really a series of documents. So if I wanted to, I could just take them right out of the binder or I could keep them in the binder. But let's assume that this was a stack of documents that I had received. So these could be invoices, these could be tests, these could be whatever I'm doing. And I just want to be able to scan these quickly. And there's a whole stack of them. In this case here, you'll see that uh, the one side has some stamps on it. The other side is blank. So I want to scan these documents. You could do double sided as well. So what I'm going to do is first go in and do a manual selection of what I'd like to scan here. Now I had a previous manual selection, so I'm just going to clear that off and I'm going to create a new manual selection, sort of line those up and I'm going to go in and select the area that I would like to scan for these documents, which is the page for the album. I can then either, I, I usually adjust a little bit here, make sure that I've got it exactly where I want it. So now I'm going to scan this. Now here you'll notice I have a little bit of gloss on here. This is where my studio lights are coming into play so I can play around a little bit with the lighting here. So I've turned off the overhead light and all I've kept is the side light here so I've gotten rid of any gloss on the actual cover for this stamp as well as there, there's a plastic cover over, over protecting it here as well. But here's the very interesting part of this. If I go to auto scan it's going to actually detect as I flip the pages to the side. So when I go to scan here, it's going to take the first scan and all I have to do is flip the pages and it will automatically scan the pages as I flip them. So this is great for a stack of documents that are all the same dimensions that I just want to quickly go through and auto scan a whole bunch of them. You can see I can very quickly work my way through this album and get all of these different pages scanned in. Um, I could go through, you could take quite a few at the same time if you wanted to, but obviously I would do one by one and I would go through and I would scan these pages in and it would automatically auto scan each of them in. Very handy feature if you have a stack of documents. Now the next item I'm going to demonstrate some features using is this large uh, graphic novel. So this is a large absolute edition graphic novel. That, that doesn't matter as much. It's just, it's a big book. It's a big book. It's a fairly thick book. That's what you need to remember here. And I want to be able to scan this. So the first thing I'm going to do is last time I was working with auto scanning. So I make sure that that's turned off. And here I'm going to do this as a facing page book. So with the facing page book, it'll take a scan of both pages, but then it will break those scans into two single pages, in this case, with a large size book. I'm actually gonna put this on auto enhance, so I have that there as well. And what I can do is use my finger cots in order to keep the book flat. It won't matter on the first few initial pages, but as you get further into the book, it could make a difference. So I'm going to make sure that this center seam lines up. I'm going to go in, I'm going to use the finger cots here just to 
I, I don't really need to hold the book like this, but I am for now. I'm gonna press the foot pedal and that scan is going to come in. And you can see the scan is going through as I go through. Now here's an example of the glossy paper. So if I had, for example, these lights on, I might get a lot of gloss on here. So that's where you have to look at the ambient area that you're in and how much uh, light you have. I'm in the studio here. I have a little bit of light here that I might wanna play around with if I was wanting to scan this for anything, you know, very serious. A lot of times with like these graphic novels, I'll just scan them in for reading. So I, you know, a little bit of gloss, I'm gonna get that if I read it anyways. So I'll go in here and we'll just go ahead and scan these in. This would be really good if I wanted to go in and maybe if I'm writing a blog post about this particular artist or this particular series, I could go in and I could scan the elements that I want in here. I could also go in, do a manual selection if I want, and then underneath the manual selection, I could say, okay, maybe this panel here is interesting to me. So I could select this specific panel of the book and we can again post produce it a little bit if we need to and I'll just scan that. So now I've scanned that area there and then I can clear off my selection. So that's an example of working with both a uh, scanned pages that are split across two pages as well as choosing one specific section of, for example, a book. And then if we take a look at those scans, I'll just put this back, got to keep it nice and clean. So now that I've scanned them and you can see if I double click, I can preview the scans as well. So there's an example of a page that I took the split page. This is just one side of the page, so I can see that in there. This, this is the panel that I took. So now let's take a look at a very typical use for this scanner, which is to scan a book into a digital format. This is very useful. Here's an older book that I have on stamp collecting. So this is Canada and British North America. And maybe I want to scan some pages in here or even a chapter in here that I want to be able to have in a digital format. So let's go ahead and I'll just, I'll just choose a random page here. And you'll notice that the book is, it sits pretty flat. So I actually probably do not need to use the finger cots in order to open it up. It'll actually uh, be fine with that. A lot of times I'll either auto enhance, you could go color if you wanted, or you could go black and white because this book is in black and white. So you have some options there. I'm doing the facing pages. And now what I'm gonna do is click the foot pedal and it's going to take a scan. I'm gonna flip to the next page. Here it's kind of you know coming up a little bit, so maybe I'll use the finger cots in here just to keep those pages flat. I'll go ahead and scan that. Next page here. I'll go ahead and scan that. So I can see I'm going through and scanning the pages. And let's go to a page where there's maybe some um, besides just text. So here you can see. And just so you know, in this book, because this book is... Uh, almost a 80 year old book. The, the, these are actually not very high fidelity in the book itself. So it will give me high fidelity here because of the 24 megapixel camera, but uh, you know, high fidelity on a low fidelity image will give you a high fidelity image of a low fidelity image. Man. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. So if we look here, I can go in and preview this. So you can see here I have a nice clean page. So there's an example of a nice clean page taken from that book. And now I can preserve this book and I can use the digital copy and uh, that's a really good thing. I can also carry it with me if I'm going to, for example, a stamp show. Although this book is a little bit more um, about the, the you know, history of postal uh, stuff in Canada. Now I want to read it. But anyway, so you can see that I have really good uh, scans here that I can then have in a digital format. So I like that quite a bit. So we've seen this work as a really good scanner, but what about if I want to do something like a visual presentation of a circuit board or something? So here I have a circuit board. If I was in a classroom environment or online, trying to get people to see everything on this circuit board might be quite difficult and I might want to call out certain areas of the circuit board. Well, with the ET24 Pro, that is not a problem. I'm going to go into the software and now I'm going to go to the visual presenter. I'm going to turn on the display and you'll see that it now displays the circuit board here. Again, I can adjust lights depending on how much light I want on the circuit board and such. You have a lot of options there. You might not want the glow on there. You might want to have the side floodlights on there. That looks pretty good to me. And I want to work with the board. Now, one of the nice things about the high quality camera in this device is that I can flip this around and I don't get very much lag. It's, it's very uh, quickly responding in terms of being able to flip around and call out things on the circuit board and talk about the object as I'm working with it. 
Obviously, it could be any object. It could be a document for that matter. But in my case, I'm just going to demonstrate a physical object here. And in the software, one of the things that I really like is that I can go into the software and I can go in and do things like take a note. So I could draw a circle around the pins there. I could actually you know, use a circle circle. So I could draw a circle around this little board here multiple circles you can actually get rid of if you make a mistake you can erase what you've done there so I could do for example a, again a circle around the pins there I could do a square around some object in there as well what's interesting here is that any of the annotations that I make here so any of the the changes I make so I'll just say this is cool with my horrible handwriting probably press down a little bit more on my tablet so I'm using a pen on my tablet. So this is cool. So one of the things I can do here is I could put a pointer on here. So you can move things around. Oh, so not a pointer. I can move it around on the screen. I can go in and use a laser pointer on here to point out different things. I can go in and erase. I've shown you that. I can undo my last actions as well. So I can take out the word cool if I want. So we'll take out that. I can go in and this is a very neat feature. I can zoom in. So as I zoom in, and then again, I could use the mouse pointer to highlight this. Notice that any of the changes I made, like the circle here, are actually carried through to the image that I have. I can actually freeze that image if I want. I can unfreeze it. And then if I want to go back to the non-zoomed out state, I can just press the return to normal or I can use the plus minus buttons here. You can also do what's called a flash mark. So here I might want to say, and this is, a, oh, I'm on the wrong one here. So I go flash mark and choose to do a annotation. I could say this here is very important and after a few moments that'll just disappear. So that's why it's called a flash mark. It just lasts for a few moments so you can highlight things and then you don't have to worry about erasing them. You can just highlight something, talk about it briefly, and then you can have your regular annotations remain and your flash animations will, will go away. So I can turn that off and then anything I do now will be permanent and that will stay even as I zoom in and zoom out. So I find this really as a neat tool for a visual presenter. Obviously you can see that as I move it, those, those just stay where they were. So I could realign it if I want to. That can be helpful, I guess, for some artwork and some documents. And I can, of course, just go in and erase all my annotations as well. The HDMI output on the ET24 Pro is especially useful for teaching or demonstrations or presentations. Here I have it going out to an external LCD screen, but I could have that onto a large screen in an auditorium, wherever I might be working. And anything I bring underneath here, underneath the camera, will now show up on the screen, and I can move it around. It's, there's no lag, it's very, very quick. It's really handy, I like to use it a lot for things like circuit boards and such. But one of the features that's also neat is that I can actually zoom in so I can actually use the buttons on the ET24 Pro to zoom right in on something that I might have under the camera and you can see I can get quite a lot of detail and it shows up on the screen quite well so that's a very useful thing especially if I have something that I want to show students like I said a circuit board or in this case here a map and I can go in and I can demonstrate here and students can see very clearly what I'm doing from anywhere in the classroom so this pro level scanner is a great solution for teaching, archiving, anything where you're going to be doing quite a lot of scanning and you need the features that I demonstrated. If you're looking for something a little less powerful but still very powerful, check out the other videos I have on the Shine Ultra and the Aura Scanner. Both are fantastic scanners, especially for individual teachers or students. Check those videos out and if you're looking for the pro level solution, check out the ET24 Pro.